in six months, by following this, you could gain the same amount of muscle as a year if you don't follow this. That's doubling your gains, people. Coach Greg, and today I am going to be describing the top 10 things that you should be avoiding if you're trying to build muscle. All of us, including me, have done at least one of these in the past, if not right now. And so if you want to maximize your muscle, you want to minimize the amount of these that you're doing. Now, no one's perfect. You might be doing some of these, but the less you do, the better your results are going to be. From my estimation, 50% of the gains that people are supposedly making are left on the table. Why? Because they are doing some of these top 10 things. Okay. So some are worse than others. Some are not a big deal, but they're still adding up towards that maximum potential. Okay. So just think in six months by following this, you could gain the same amount of muscle as a year. If you don't follow this, that's doubling your gains people. Okay. That is huge. Okay. I'm not talking about, you know, taking enhancements or any of that stuff. This is for natural guys. If you're enhanced, it also applies to you. All right. So before we get started, this is not medical advice. I ain't no doctor. I'm a kinesiologist. That's what I do. That's how this makes sense. This is my specialty. So pay attention. Number one, too much hard cardio. If you are trying to build muscle, you can't be going all out in the gym doing cardio. I don't care if it's hit cardio, fasted, hit cardio, fasted, hard cardio, evening cardio, middle of the night cardio, whatever cardio it is. If it's too hard, it's going to take away from your muscle growth. The body cannot recover fully from both cardio sessions and weight sessions. There are just two different pathways to recovery. If you can't be an Olympic athlete in the triathlon and a bodybuilding champion. They just don't mix. You might be a bodybuilding champion and a powerlifting champion. You might be a running champion and a cycling champion, but you can't be the cardio king and the weightlifting king. I have tried this, a huge error I've made. I tried to be Mr. Triathlon provincial champion and all this. Obviously it hindered my gains. And as I got older, I stopped doing that. Even more recently, I bike ride a lot. It's not going to help me grow, but I went down to classic. So people comment a lot. I'm trying to be smaller. I'm not trying to be the hugest guy. I'm only allowed to compete at 185. So for me, it's fine. Okay. But for you, if you're trying to build maximum muscle, don't be on your bicycle sprinting up mountains all day long or doing hit cardio too hard. That is reason number one, that you're not making all your gains. Number two, everybody's done this at least once. Fasting, skipping meals, going too long without eating. Whether you're busy, on the road, on the go, there's nothing ready, or you're trying to do some kind of fast because you read it was the cool thing to do, whatever. It is limiting your, your chance to grow. You have basically five opportunities for muscle growth, for muscle protein synthesis in a day. You want to spread out your meals. If you're eating about every five hours, that's amazing. If you're eating more often than that, that's just as great. It doesn't benefit you to eat 10 times a day. Eating every two hours isn't better than every three. It's not better than every four. So you don't have to go crazy and be like, oh, I have to eat every two hours. I'm a bodybuilder, I have to eat all the time. No, you don't. Five meals a day is plenty. If you only get four, that's almost as good as five. So if you're getting four meals a day or more, you're basically at your potential. That's pretty much it. Five meals, you know, six, that's for like the pure hardcore bodybuilding breeds that it makes a difference. One pound of muscle is going to make a break winning this show. But for most people, as long as you get four meals in a day with protein, 20 grams or more for most people, unless you're like a really small woman, that's fine. Okay. Don't skip meals. Do not skip them. I don't care if you're on the go, grab a stinking protein bar and don't give me some BS story about how it's full of chemicals and going to kill you. Eat some protein. I don't care where it's from. Doesn't matter. Get some protein. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you think. Breakfast. Don't skip it before bed. Don't skip it because you're going to sleep. 
okay? You don't want to skip before bed. Don't be like, oh, I can't eat after dark. What are you, a gremlin? No matter how much he begs, what? never, never feed him after midnight. Come on! You can do this before bed. Then you wake up, breakfast, breaking a fast. You just slept for eight hours. It's time to eat. That's a long time without eating. Break the fast, eat breakfast. That's two of your meals. Three more meals in the day somewhere. Four, five, six hours apart, whatever. Get them in. Doesn't matter if it's got full carbs, protein. It needs to have a minimum amount of protein. And it doesn't matter if the fat and the carbs are together or if one or the other. Just eat, okay? Just eat. If you're obese, eat less. If you're scrawny, eat more. This is simple, five meals a day. That's reason number two. Number three, drinking and partying. If you're drinking wine all the time, it's gonna hurt your growth. Alcohol is not good for muscular gains. Neither is partying on certain substances, okay? Use your, use your brain here. If you're going out to the bar Friday and Saturday nights every weekend, clubbing, dancing, and staying up till 5 a.m. on a bunch of stims or what have you, it's gonna affect your sleep and your growth and it's gonna hurt your recovery. No brainer, I don't need to expand on this. So be careful, moderation. You're not gonna maybe be like, oh, I never drink alcohol in my life, I'm a saint. No, but just use your common sense, try to limit it and exercise caution and don't drink and drive. Number four, neglecting sleep or avoiding sleep aids. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, you stay up too late, you get up too early, you don't have a good night's sleep, you're maybe on your phone all night. You don't sleep well. If you don't sleep well, fix the problem. Take some sleep aids. What do I mean by that? Could be melatonin. It could be doctor, doctor prescribed sleeping medication. If it's legal in your country, it could be cannabis. It depends, okay? Do what you think you need to do with your doctor's supervision to sleep properly and to fix that. Don't abuse anything, but make sure you're sleeping. You need to sleep to recover. You need to sleep to not eat. When you're sleeping, you can't be eating. It should be rhyming. Right, babe? It's a rhyme. It's rhyming. It's rhyming. Rhyme time. I'm gonna be a rapper in my next life. There we go. Number five, holding back in the gym and lacking effort or intensity. And don't give me some sob story of, I don't know what the definition of intensity is. We all know. Just freaking train hard, harder than last time. Train hard, hard all the time. Always train hard. Shut up, just train, train hard, train harder. Stop being like a pansy in the gym and not pushing hard. I'm not gonna include don't overtrain. No, it's not part of this. Why? Because hardly anyone overtrains. And if you do, you know it. You're that crazy guy that's like training five hours a day. You're like, going redonkulous. You probably have a mental challenge that's making you push so hard. Just don't overtrain. But I don't need to tell you that because hardly any of you are. The 1% who are, just hold back. Most people, you need to train harder. You're not doing good. You're not putting in enough effort. You're going through the motions. You're just following some, I'm the RP of a seven. I just saved three reps in the gym. Did you do more volume in the bit there? Cause the science said it, Jeff Nippert said it. I don't care what they said. Train harder, you'll get more results. Boba, well, there's this guy at the gym and he looks better than you and he doesn't train hard. Yeah, it's genetics, genetics. If you use those genetics and they train harder like me, or like other people who train hard, they will be even better. So don't use an excuse of, I know one guy who doesn't train hard and he looks great, so I'm gonna copy him. No, train hard. Next, sixth reason. Only training each body part once a week, doing these bro splits, or like following some Mr. Olympia bodybuilding.com program that you read in a magazine once and followed the training. Oh, Arnold trained this way, or some guy in the 80s, doesn't matter what you read or think, that's not the best way to train. Train each body part twice a week. Could be three, two is enough. If you can't get twice a week, once every seven days is absolutely not enough. That's 50 times you get a chance to grow muscle in a year, that's not enough. If you train twice a week, each muscle, you have 104 opportunities to grow that muscle in a year. If you train every six days, it's better than seven. If you train each muscle every five days, that's better than seven. Every four, it's still better. So just train more often than every seven days. This light is driving me insane. Anyway, 
Okay, so try to train every three or four days each body part. Next, cutting, cutting and losing weight too fast. Cutting and losing weight too fast, too fast. I have these clients on the phone all the time and they're like, yeah, I lost 50 pounds in two months. It's like they could win these before and after transformation contests but they're losing a ton of muscle. They're even giving me bod pod results, skin folds, uh, DEXA scans, which we all know have inaccuracies. But when it's showing that you lost 12 pounds of muscle, it's not a good sign. You can speed fat loss by starving yourself, but it doesn't make a program good. Mike O'Hearn posted on IG this before and after thing. I had 55 zero. 50 people send me this picture oh this is impossible it's drugs and it's this and it's that no it's easily possible take a guy he sticks his gut out uh look and then he flexes oh it's already a transformation he already looks like he lost 20 pounds and then he diets for nine or ten weeks starving himself you're gonna lose a ton of fat add some anabolics to it and you're not gonna lose much muscle or you might even build even starving you go from 4,000 calories a day to 1,200 calories a day, you're gonna lose a lot of weight. It's easy, very easy. If you're extremely obese, 600 pounds, you can easily lose 50 pounds in a month. Very easy. Do you think I can lose 50 pounds in a month? I can't lose 50 pounds in my life. I'm 192. If I lose 50 pounds, I don't even have 50 pounds of fat. I could eat nothing and I would just lose muscle forever until I'm dead. I'd be anorexic. It doesn't, it's not the way to go. Okay. So try not to lose too much too quickly. 1% max. And if you're lean, a half a percent max. By lean, I mean 10%, like very lean. Like if you're really close to your show, you don't want to lose fat too quickly because it's going to be some muscle. Okay. So pay attention to that. Don't lose too quickly. So that's what I tell my clients when they, oh, I only lost a half a pound this week. I'm only losing a half a pound. My friend's losing five pounds a week. You're going to keep it off and they are going to rebound, yo-yo, lose muscle and have no good results. This is a marathon. This is not Usain Bolt sprinting. Okay. This is some guy from Kenya going for two hours. All right break in a two hour marathon record. It is a long process of continued effort, okay? If you lose one pound a week, that's 50 pounds a year. That's plenty. I, even if you're 100 pounds overweight, in two years, you're shredded, boom, and you keep it off. Better than losing 100 pounds in three months, having half of it be all your muscle, now you're just skinny fat, and then you gain all this weight back because you've lost your metabolism. Don't do that. And number eight, bulking up and getting fat. A lot of you are thinking you need this massive surplus in calories to build more muscle. It is not the case. It will make no difference to help you out. Eating an extra thousand calories a day, stupid and just not gonna help. 500 calories an extra a day, not going to help at all in actually building muscles. The studies will show this. The extra weight is fat and water and glycogen. It's not actually muscle. So then what happens? You get really fat. You think you put on all this muscle. You haven't. It's water and fat. And then when you diet back down, you think you have all this muscle. You didn't. It's fat and water and you lose it all. And you're like, oh, well, that sucks. So you wasted all this time bulking up when you didn't need to. Now, if you really want to maximize muscle growth, you don't need more than say 50 calories a day extra. You cannot even calculate accurately 50 calories. I can't even do it. It's so minuscule of an amount. So if you're eating 3000 and someone says up it to 3050, there it's too hard. If you're eating 3000 a day, you're probably eating 2900 to 3100. If you're very good at tracking calories, because every piece of steak, has maybe a little bit more fat in it or a little bit less, you don't know. Every cup of rice, maybe it has a little bit more rice than the other cup. Every teaspoon, tablespoon, it's just very hard. 50 calories doesn't matter. So if you're trying to gain weight, just slowly go up in weight, slow. Keep your fat the same, don't go crazy. It's just a waste of time, it's a myth, it's not needed, I've made so many videos on this topic and just don't do it. Don't get fat in the hopes of getting more muscle. And yeah, you're gonna ask, but I'm skinny. I get it all the time. I'm skinny though, it doesn't apply to me. Yeah, but you're enhanced. 
it's if you're natural, you need to bulk up and you need a lot of, no, all the same. Stop thinking it's different. Please stop the madness. Next, number nine, missing supplements or skipping your supplements or just improper supplementation. And I don't care if it's natural or not natural. You okay, guys, oh yeah, I'm on HRT, but I skipped my dose for the last three weeks. Well, that ain't good. What are you doing? Skip the thing for three weeks. Or, well, yeah, I take those omegas, but I, I only remember like three times a week. <laughs> well, come on. I, I'm, on, I'm not all natural. I use the creatine, but I only use it like twice a week. <laughs> You're losing out on your progress. Oh, I can't sleep, but I always forget to take my melatonin. <laughs> You're hindering your progress. Proper supplementation, follow your plan, and consistently do so. Don't just say, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll do it when I can think of it. Proper supplementation. Number 10, ego lifting in the gym and being like, I'm putting on muscle, training, and just slamming the weights, going too fast, going too heavy, wanting to do PRs. Everybody's done it. Me, done it. Everybody, do you know how many torn pecs I've seen, torn biceps, injured quads from guys who are like, I am, I'm stronger, I'm training hard, I want to progress. And then they max out, one rep max. Oh, I've never done 400 pound bench press before. Ugh, torn pec. <sighs> Bad, better to have one rep maxes, like if you're a power lifter and you really need to, but it's dangerous. If you're doing a one rep max bench press, Pause the weight. Have a new run rep max for pausing the weight. Slam, touch and go, stretch, reflex, all oh, torn muscle. Not good at all. So be careful, squatting, deadlifting. Why not go for maxes for reps? Rep maxes, this is how I did it when I grew up. Gotta go down here to light. So yeah, don't go for really heavy weights using improper form. Don't get hurt. If you get injured, you're slowing all your progress down big time. And if you are injured, don't take supplements to mask the pain. The doctors might prescribe it. Oh, I feel good now. My shoulder, I have a torn labrum. I'm gonna keep training because I had my cortisone shot. Guess what happened to me? So 13 days before Worlds, I injured my shoulder, torn labrum, the whole thing. I can't even lift my arm up, it's hanging. I'm literally crying because I'm 13 days from Worlds and I'm gonna bench press 550 and have this freak bench press at 198. I can't do anything, can't lift my arm. I'm 40 some years old, 42 at the time. Go to doctor, cortisone shot, the third one I have. And then, you know, I can move my arm and then I don't train, I go to the, to the, to the Worlds, bench 529 for all time world record. Guess what? Haven't been able to bench press since. I can't, it hurts. As if I get four inches from my chest, super bad pain. I can't bench. So I'm like, bench press my favorite exercise my whole life, 20, you know, thir 32 years I was benching and was famous and known for my bench. From the age of 13, everyone was like, wow, you're so strong at bench. Can't do it. Injured and you train while injured. Now, maybe if I had just not trained all that time, Maybe I could have kept going, but that's the sport. That's what we do. Football players, you think they're not going to play every time they get a little injury? That's what happens. But if you don't want to hinder your long-term progress, don't ego lift, okay? I probably wouldn't have got hurt if I didn't have 500 pounds trying to get four reps with it, but that's what happens when you lift heavy. But I was training for a meet. If you're just training to look good, there's no reason to max out ever. It's ego lifting. It doesn't help. It's fun and tempting, but don't do it. And of course you're gonna do it, we're gonna like it, and you're gonna do it. But do it at limited amounts and be safe and be careful. When you do that bench press, pause that weight. When you do that squat, be careful not to hurt your back. When you deadlift, use good form. Don't be like, I'm gonna just hitch it and turn and twist and pull it up no matter. No, it's not worth it. You're better off just doing a set of max reps or something, okay? Click the subscribe button. Subscribe, then bell right away. Do it now, swoosh, you're notified. Watch my videos instantly. Please comment. Before you watch the video, do not make a comment to make yourself look stupid, okay? Please don't do that. I'm sick of reading messages where my comment is 20 times on every video. Clearly you never watched the video because I explained this at the end. Every single time people make these stupid remarks, 
They didn't watch the video. Oh, Greg, you don't understand this. And it's like at minute seven, I went into detail explaining what they wrote. And they think they're Mr. Smarty Pants, but they look so stupid because they didn't watch the video. Watch the video and comment. If you want to leave a comment to say, I'm excited to watch this. This will be good. Don't be like commenting on the video as if you watched it and pretend and want to be the first one to say I'm stupid. It just makes you look dumb. Anyway, you want to see more videos on how to train for muscle growth or how to get your maximum amount of muscle or what not to do? Watch these videos. Two are blooping up right now, right in your face. Watch one of those videos because you're watching this to grow muscle. You're going to watch these too because this will tell you how to grow muscle as well. Greg Doucette, IFBB Pro on Instagram. GregDoucette.com is my website. Go there. Phone consult. Buy meal plan. Whatever. Do stuff. Go on the site. Check it out. Until next time, I am out.